Hey everyone, Editor Skyler here. Before we begin with today's episode of Fireside Dice Explained, I just wanted to pop in, give you a heads up that I was not able to record this episode in my usual place, so that means there's going to be some voices and some sounds in the background you might pick up on. Um, there's nothing I can do about that, and hopefully next month we'll be back to our normal recording spot, and that will be taken care of. Thanks, enjoy today's episode. Hello friend, come. Join us by the fire. The story's about to begin. Hello everyone, welcome back to the fire for another episode of Fireside Dice Explained. I'm your host, Skylar, and last month I sat down and discussed the Plain of Ravnica and the guilds that inhabit it. For today's discussion, I want to explain something called the color theory and how it affects the world of our campaign as well as our characters. Magic the Gathering is a tabletop collectible card game created by Richard Garfield. Like many other similar games, Magic involves drawing seven cards from a deck and strategically using the cards you draw to defeat your opponent. There is one feature of Magic the Gathering, however, that sets it apart from other games, the color pie. Every card you use is categorized by up to five different colors. These colors are white, green, red, black, and blue. Each color is unique, both in how their cards behave in-game and what philosophy they represent in the story Magic the Gathering tells. These philosophies are what I want to talk about most. I'm going to break down what each color cares about, how they achieve their goals, and some of their negative aspects. We'll begin with white. Now, white ultimately desires peace and wants to end all unnecessary suffering. They believe we should focus on the needs of the collective in order to make everyone's life as good as possible. They do this by teaching individuals to make decisions that benefit the group as a whole, even if it doesn't benefit them personally. The system doesn't work if not everyone is moving towards the same goal, however. White understands this, so they utilize rigid structure to help lead people down what they believe is the right path. This means that white's greatest weakness is its lack of flexibility. It struggles to adapt to any changes in the world around them. Next is green. Green is unique compared to all the other colors because while they all focus on how they can change the world around them, green believes that the world is perfect how it is. It wants acceptance in the natural order of things. Green teaches that everyone is born with all the potential they will ever need. If you want to be happy, then all you need to do is recognize the role you were made for. Nature is a complex and large system, with many moving parts. Green relishes in being part of such a complex system and is happy to fulfill its place. Since green believes that nature represents perfection, it uses nature to achieve its goals. The other colors can't accept the truth in green's eyes because they don't understand. This understanding comes from observing the world around us. One constant we see in nature is change. Plants grow and wither, animals breed and die, seasons come and go. However, green cannot stand any unnatural change. Now, unnatural change can come in the form of man-made creations that are meant to usurp the natural order of things, or things being removed from nature inorganically. For example, if all the predators of an area were killed off, then the prey would grow in numbers, and it would unbalance the world. It's not man's place to change the status quo, according to Green. Moving on, let's discuss red. Red is one of the simplest colors when it comes to motivation. It believes that your feelings and emotions are direction from your heart, and they inform you of your course in life. In opposition to White's focus on collective, red focuses on their own individual experience. Life is one long adventure and we can only experience it ourselves. If we let our emotions guide us, then we will live life to its fullest. Red doesn't focus on the future or regret the past. It lives in the moment. Now, since red is driven by emotion, they experience relationships very strongly. Since red is driven by emotion, they experience relationships very strongly. They're passionate, loyal, and driven. To outsiders, they can seem intense and chaotic, but only because no one else can truly understand what they are feeling. <laughs> Red's focus on the here and now means it is a color of action and impulse. 
They achieve goals by never stopping and always doing whatever the next step might be. Red can also be good at inflaming the emotions of others. When one is guided by emotion, it allows them to understand emotions and how to trigger them. Red's weakness comes about due to its impulsiveness, however. It doesn't pause to consider the consequences an action might have. It also grows frustrated when nothing is happening or something tries to stop it from doing what it wants. After red, we have black. While all the other colors see what they want the world to be, black sees things as they are. People can have whatever they want so long as they have the power to take it. The world is greedy and black has figured out how to use the system for its own gain. No one will prioritize you, so you must prioritize yourself. Black system is one where everyone looks out for themselves, and everyone has the opportunity to succeed, whether they do or not is a whole other story. There are no constraints or roadblocks aside from the ones we build ourselves. For black, the key to success is the ability to take advantage of any situation and to never let something get in your way. Life is hard, so you have to do whatever it takes to move forward. Black still understands that everything has a price and a consequence, they just know that power is worth the cost. Black's ambition can sometimes be its downfall, however. It might make a choice with the too steep of a cost. They can also fail to realize how many enemies they've made over time. When one lives a life that views others as expendable or as tools to a mean, it is very easy to upset other people. Now for the final color, blue. In contrast to green, Blue believes that we are all born as clean slates, with no clear purpose. It is only through proper education and experimentation that we find direction. As such, Blue seeks perfection. But since true perfection doesn't exist, Blue experiences a life of never-ending improvement and adaptation. Time is precious, so Blue takes time to consider options so it can discover the best possible option moving forward. When striving for its goals, information is Blue's greatest tool. Knowledge is power, after all, and the more you have, the more effective it can be. As a result, Blue is always interested in learning as much as possible, and believes the desire to learn should always be promoted. Blue's weakness is reflected by Red. While Red's impulsiveness can lead it into trouble, Blue's methodical calculations can leave it stagnant. Sometimes there isn't enough time to consider every possible option. And these are the moments that frustrate and fluster blue. So that's the basics of color theory in Magic the Gathering, but it gets a lot deeper than that. By combining different colors together, you start to get much deeper philosophies. For the sake of time, I won't go into detail regarding every single combination that there is. Instead, I will use my character in the main campaign, Bartholomew, as an example. If you'd like to learn more about the different color combinations, stick around until the end of this episode when I will share some more resources that you can learn from. When we here at Fireside Dice decided as a group that we wanted to play a Magic the Gathering inspired campaign, we also decided to use the Magic the Gathering color pie in place of the typical Dungeons and Dragons alignment chart. Each of us chose a color combination that we would use as a guide for how our characters would behave and make decisions. For my character, I chose the color combo green, white, blue. Green is found in his sense of purpose. Bartholomew believes he was given the powers he has so that he can help other people. This is also where white shows up. He's focused on everyone around him rather than on himself. He also believes that the best way he can help people is by helping them discover how to be their perfect self. This is in conjunction this, in conjunction with his propensity to think things through, is where blue shows up. Now, color combos aren't just about the colors present. It also is equally important to consider what colors are absent in a character. The lack of red means Bartholomew is methodical, not impulsive. While he still feels emotions, he doesn't let those emotions control or guide him. The absence of black means he focuses on others and has no lofty ambitions for himself. Well, I think that will be all for today. I hope this gives you an idea of the basic tenets of the color pie and how it comes into gameplay. Color theory is deeply ingrained in Magic the Gathering, so it will come up a lot in the future explained episodes, and occasionally in the campaign itself. If you would like to learn more, I will have two resources in the description of this episode over on YouTube. The first is a series of articles written by a man named Mark Rosewater. Mark is the head designer for Magic the Gathering and is an expert on color theory. 
The second is a YouTube channel many of us here at Fireside Dice have learned from called Dice Try. Dice has quite a few really good videos where he breaks down the five basic colors as well as every possible combination of two to three colors and the resulting philosophies that result from those. I can't recommend him enough. And with that, I hope you all have a great week. I'll leave you all with a question. What colors do you think Balfour and Surrey are? Feel free to leave your guesses in the comments of this episode over on YouTube. Until next time. Thank you all for joining us in this episode of Fireside Dice. This podcast is produced by Realms of Roleplaying, and all music used in this program was produced by Alexander Nakarada of Serpent Sound Studios. We'll see you all in the next episode.